Good morning. My name is Daniel Brookshire, and I'm the Emerging Leaders Fellow here at the Institute for Emerging Issues at NC State. Uh, it sh I should note here that this is a take two of a webinar I did earlier this morning, but I'm going to get to every question that was asked, and we'll post a, a version of this online uh, on our website and also email it to uh, everyone that was attending the webinar this morning. So today I'm going to speak to you about uh, the Institute for Emerging Issues, uh, what our mission and uh, who we are. Then I'll go over the, the history for the Prize for Innovation. Then I'll talk primarily about this year's Prize for Innovation, uh, the application process and the topic. Uh, and then I'll talk about the selection and implementation process for this year's award winners. Uh, and lastly, I, during the webinar earlier, I left time for questions but I'm just going to read the ones that were asked at that webinar. So to begin, uh, what is the Institute for Emerging Issues? So if you've never worked with us before, the Institute for Emerging Issues was established in 2002 by former Governor Jim Hunt, who calls us a think and do tank. We're based at NC State University here in the brand new Hunt Library, which is a uh, LEED Silver Certified Building, um, and we work with partners across the state to tackle our state's biggest issues in a long-term comprehensive way. We engage stakeholders from various perspectives, sectors, and regions in the state to make real progress in our four issue areas of education, health, the natural and built environments, and the economy. Each year we pick a new emerging issue facing North Carolina and develop a program of work based around that issue. We do a great deal of work each year around the state on our program of work, but our most famous event is our annual Emerging Issues Forum, which is held here annually in Raleigh. And that's the culminating event of the year in our program of work. So again, as I just mentioned, uh, we focus on four main issue areas here at IEI. Uh, the economy, education, environments, and health. And this is how we focus our work to enhance North Carolina's long-term prosperity. And for each issue area, we have a policy manager who serves as the lead expert and chief organizer for projects around their issue area. And to give you an example of some of the emerging issues that we've covered in the past three years, uh, so last year's forum and program of work centered on the teachers and the great economic debate. The year before that was investing in Generation Z. And the year before that was uh, at Manufacturing Works, which, which focused on advanced manufacturing uh, in, throughout the state. Now I want to give you a, a, a little bit of a glimpse into this year's forum. So it's actually our 30th Emerging Issues Forum. So the forums have, have definitely predated the Institute itself. Um, and the, the, the forums, again, were started by Governor Jim Hunt uh, back in 1985. So in, in the spirit of our 30th Emerging Issues Forum, we're going to ask, how will our companies and communi communities compete in a future of accelerating everything? During the past 30 years, North Carolina has had to continue to transform its economy and expand its capacity to innovate. But for North Carolina to continue to prosper, our communities and institutions must anticipate and confront the demands of unprecedented change and connections. And so for this forum, we will seek answers to the following questions. Do North Carolina's companies and communities have what it takes? What mix of factors best support cutting edge innovation? How are innovation models changing and adapting to fast paced global realities? And do we have the right infrastructure inputs and supports to be successful? I'll give you a little history of the Prize for Innovation itself. So it was started back in 2011 as an attempt to engage our state's youngest generation and future leaders in the work of IEI. In the, the past years, we've challenged students in North Carolina to come up with creative, creative ideas for solving some of our state's toughest issues. Historically, the prize is related to the current program of work and the first prize was related to our health innovations program. 
and actually asked college students to come up with a solution to the childhood obesity epidemic. The, the following year's prize tied to our Gen Z program and invited college and high school students to find a way to increase high school graduation rates. And last year's prize again focused on teachers and the great economic debate. So this year's prize is going to be a little different from the past because it's more generally tied to IEI's overall mission. So to give you a sample of our past success stories, let me mention our winners from last year's competition. They included Beginning Teaching Matters from UNC Wilmington, uh, My Health Ed from UNC Chapel Hill, Teacher Loop from NC State, Pennies for Progress also from NC State, and you can find a lot more about these projects on our website, including their team videos. Winners from other years have included Scored, Studio Lounge, Linked Up, Stencil, and AIM. So enough about us and about the past competitions. Uh, let's focus now on most of our attention on this year's prize. So this is actually the second year that the contest has been sponsored by the State Employees Credit Union. And thanks to their generous support, we've been able to significantly expand the prize and the award amount from when we first started this prize. And I want to take a moment to go ahead and navigate to our website so that you can see exactly where our application is and that you can follow along throughout this webinar. So to find that, you will go to our website, which is iai.ncsu.edu. And right now it's on our homepage, but in the event that it is not, uh, navigate to it by going to our events section and then going to the 2015 prize. And then to get to the application itself, you can click on the apply link uh, here, or there's another link at the bottom. And that'll pull up a PDF of the application itself, which is what I'll be referencing primarily today. Okay, so now that you have the application in front of you, let me go over the overall prize topic. So the 2015 SECU Emerging Issues Prize for Innovation rewards student teams that channel their creativity and talent to address critical issues affecting North Carolina's future economic competitiveness and well-being. The prize empowers teams of two to five students to help solve a problem affecting North Carolina in one or more of these areas, the economy, education, the natural and built environments, and health. So to give you an idea of the types of projects we anticipate, here are a few examples of the goals your team's project might try to address in the form your project might take. But please keep in mind, these are only a few examples and the challenges are everywhere. Your team can choose any challenge it wants to attack, just be innovative and back up your great idea with a solid implementation plan. Uh, I, I'm providing these goals here, again, just as examples. So your, your team doesn't necessarily have to address these, but we're just including them uh, kind of as, as examples of what the types of projects we might expect to see this year. So some of the goal examples could be to make rural communities a better place to live and to build a long-term career, to raise high school graduate graduation rates in a community within the state, uh, make North Carolina's communities more walkable or bike friendly, or lower North Carolina's childhood obesity rate. And the formats these projects could take could be to launch a social enterprise, create a media campaign, start a nonprofit, perfect a new technology or app, create a for-profit business, or maybe you've got an entirely new approach or model in mind, which we hope you do. Now overall, the price structure has four parts. Uh, so the first part would be to identify a challenge facing North Carolina in the issue areas that I mentioned. Then you would create a team to propose a solution to this challenge. And then you would need to enlist a principal investigator and administrative contact. And most importantly, you need to submit a completed application by December 1st to us. Now I'm going to note here that it's desirable that a proposal's key ideas originate within the team, but it's not an absolute requirement. 
In all events, the teams must lead the project, the team members must lead the project's development and execution. And teams are responsible for ensuring the lawful use of any external intellectual property utilized in the project. So the eligibility requirements. The prize itself is open to teams of two to five students, undergraduate and or graduate and professional students in any combination, who are enrolled at time of application in any of North Carolina's two and four year colleges and universities. So this includes students pursuing an associate's, undergraduate or graduate's degree. And proof of enrollment will be required for all winning team members. I note that we absolutely require two students and uh, we strongly suggest a max of five. Uh, if teams get much bigger than that, they tend to be a little unwieldy and hard to keep intact. So what are the prizes this year? So our grand prize winner is, will be awarded a $50,000 prize, and the first runner-up will be given a $25,000 prize, and then we'll have up to two fan favorites who will be awarded $10,000 each, and they will be selected by a public voting process in January, which I'll explain more later. And lastly, we have an IEI's Emerging Idea Award, which will be given to an idea that the judges think shows promise, but isn't yet quite developed to the degree of the other awards. This $5,000 award will be used by the team to further develop and improve their idea. Emerging Ideas winners are eligible to compete and encouraged to compete in future years. Prizes are also distributed in two cash disbursements spaced six months apart. So the first disbursements are made upon completion of required paperwork by a winning team, and then the second follows a satisfactory review of the project's second quarterly report. So keep that in mind as you map out uh, your project implementation plan. Now I'm going to speak to the application requirements. I'm going to go through each of these bullet points and a few I'm going to spend a, few, uh, a longer amount of time on in the following slides. But to begin with, you must include these elements in order in your application. So to begin with, the roster of team members and roles. <clears throat> Excuse me. So each, timber, each team member must have a role, especially we need a team captain to serve as the primary contact and spokesperson. The other roles are up to the team to choose. So they could include the graphic designer, uh, the team engineer, uh, whatever role that your team needs filled and, and wants to assign a title to. Next, we need a roster of the principal investigator and of the administrative contact. So each team is required to identify a principal investigator or PI who may be a faculty member, center director, or other administrative officer at the college or university. In addition to serving as a general project advisor, the PI will be responsible for tracking, overseeing, and reporting of all prize monies after disbursement in the form of a grant award, which will be given to the team's educational institution. So that's an important point, that the, the award amounts are given directly to the team's host institution. So they will be the ones to distribute the money and facilitate uh, expenses and or in keeping track of, of receipts and things like that. Um, so the PI will help students understand and comply with the institution's rules and processes governing expenditure of grant money. So in addition to the administrative, uh, in addition to the principal investigator, teams must also identify an administrative contact. And this person is the grants administrator fiscal officer or other administrator authorized to commit the team's educational institution to the terms of the grant. So the AC is not the PI and the AC may be found in the institution's grants office, which might be called the Office of Sponsored Research or Office of Contracts or Grants. It just depends on your institution. Or it can be someone else who is able and willing to manage a grant within an academic unit of the institution. So if you look at the application here too, you'll see a special section and clarification for NC State applicants. Uh, since we are a unit of NC State here at the Institute for Emerging Issues, uh, it, there's just a little 
an extra little step that NC State teams will need to keep in mind as they um, identify an administrative contact. So take a look at that section and feel free to contact me if you have any other questions. Uh, my email is listed here at the end of the presentation. All right, so after identifying the PI and the AC uh, needs you to include a project ab abstract. Uh, and so the abstract is going to be about 250 to 300 words, and it's going to provide an overview of the challenge to be addressed, the nature of the project, the proposed solution, and just a, a brief description of team strengths. So this can include your uh, business experience, your, uh, your public speaking skills, or, or whatever you see as your team's primary strengths that you would like to highlight. Because um, in a moment, I'll, I'll talk more about the, the application process and these Abstracts become uh, very important, uh, especially in January, for teams that go on to our public voting process. Now, the proposal narrative, uh, budget and budget commentary, and the video I'm going to talk about a little more in the following slides. So let me skip now to the resume section. Uh, so uh, please submit a, a resume or CV for each team member, in addition to statements of participation from the PI and the AC. So this could just take the form as a letter where they verify their willingness to participate and acknowledge the duties of their role. And lastly, you can also include any additional supporting documents you see, you see fit, uh, including uh, graphics, um, pictures, etc. cetera. Uh, these are definitely not required, but please, if you do include them, uh, describe them and attach them as number dependencies uh, in this section. Okay, now I want to move into the proposal narrative. And this is the, the real bulk of the application and where teams should spend a lot of time drafting, getting feedback, and rewriting until they arrive at a solid final draft. So consider this uh, a mini thesis in a way. So your team's, this overall narrative should speak to the following issues. So the outline of the challenge, the approach and rationale, the likelihood of success, and the wider impact. And this, this narrative should not be longer than 4,000 words, excluding charts and graphics. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about each of these sections. So in the outline of the challenge, we're specifically looking for if the team clearly identifies the challenge to North Carolina or a, a North Carolina community targeted by the proposal. How does the challenge specifically affect North Carolina and its communities? Is the challenge critical to North Carolina's long-term competitiveness and or well-being? Now in the approach and rationale section, we're looking for what is the purpose and what are the goals of the solution? How is this solution different from other attempts to address the challenge? What is the timeline and what are the benchmarks for implementation? And in the likelihood of success application, uh, section, we're looking for how does the solution deal with possible barriers to implementation? How will you track and measure your project success? And what metrics will be used to measure impact? In the wider impact section, we're looking for to what extent is the proposed solution scalable? Can it be replicated in other North Carolina communities or across wider regions of the state or the country? So in a separate document from the proposal narrative, we're also requiring you to submit a budget and budget commentary. And this will actually be a total of three different budgets and commentaries as following. Uh, first, you need to provide a comprehensive and descriptive and quantitative budget appropriate for the 50,000 grand prize. So this is where you'll outline if, if you were received the full amount of the award, uh, how would you spend that? So uh, consider this the, the best case scenario. So next, we want you to provide a separate summary contingency budget tailored for the $25,000 runner-up prize and also a separate contingency budget for the $10,000 fan favorite award levels and explain how you would adjust your project approach to match these funding levels. So working from that initial detailed budget for the $50,000 prize, kind of assess what elements of the project can still be implemented at the other levels, and how would you, you would have to adjust your approach uh, for, to be appropriate to those other award amounts. 
So in your proposed budgets, please include estimates for expenses and potential revenue or additional funding sources if applicable. Budget should be projected for the life of the solution or for the next three years, whichever is shortest. And this whole section should be limited to about 3,000 words, excluding charts and graphics. So another thing to keep in mind in this budget section is a requirement that we have for you to allocate 10% of the total cash award for an IEI approved mentor. And we are requiring this because we know that the most successful innovators tend to be those who connect with and learn from other successful innovators and entrepreneurs. Therefore, each winning team will be required after award notification to select an IEI approved mentor or mentors who may not be the PI to serve as the team's professional advisor and help guide professional proposal implementation. Each team must therefore allocate a minimum of 10% of the total cash award for this purpose, like I just said. Um, in addition, uh, winners of the Fan Favorite and IEI's Emerging Ideas Awards will be asked after award notification to, to develop a little more detailed plan, which IEI must approve for adapting their original proposal to these award levels. Uh, one last thing before I move on to, about the, the budget section. Please note that we do not allow for any institutional overhead charges with the budget um, or, or any expenses to be made. Um, please ask me uh, any questions about that if you, if you need further clarification. All right, so back to the project video. So each team is required to develop a short, so two to three minute video describing the challenge you are addressing and your proposed solution. Videos will be evaluated together with your written application. And you must post your video either to YouTube or to, to Vimeo and submit a link to the video in this section and also as a separate line in the project abstract. Please note in submitting a video that all applicants grant permission for IEI and NC State to use reproduce or distribute the included video to the public in any manner and in any medium without payment of fee and in, perp in, in perp perpetuity. <laughs> um, these videos will be important, uh, especially for the fan favorite competition. And even if uh, you, you don't necessarily win an award this year, you might, might choose to highlight it on uh, IEI's website. So how to submit your application. So again, the due date is December 1st uh, by 11.59 p.m. And you must email this to emergingissues at ncsu.edu. Please, please, please submit this application as a single comprehensive PDF file. It makes it a lot easier for our judges to evaluate uh, your proposal um, and it's just easier to send to us that way. So if you have any difficulties in, in creating this file. Uh, the application lists a few different suggestions for free sites that you can go to that can merge PDF files. So these include pdfmerge.com, smallpdf.com, um, or if you have Adobe Acrobat, you can just do it there. And while we strongly prefer that you submit your application electronically, we do leave the option that you can mail it. Uh, just make sure it's postmarked by December 1st. Okay, so now I'll go into the selection process and the timeline. So again, as I just mentioned, the uh, due date is December 1st. Uh, and then immediately following that, the selection process will begin. So first thing that will happen is that an IEI internal prize review committee will review all applications to select a pool of semifinalists. And then we will pass those, that pool of semifinalists to an expert group of judges who will then review these applications and select the $50,000 grand prize winner, the $25,000 first runner-up winner, plus a group of other finalists who will go on to compete in the fan favorite competition. So past prize judges have included IEI board members, uh, NCSU School of Design representatives, and entrepreneurial and policy experts from around the region and the state. Uh, the grand prize and the first runner-up finalists will be announced uh, by January 23rd 
Uh, and these two finalists uh, will be notified. Uh, but though they will not be told which two of the awards, uh, which award they have won. So we'll create a little suspense that way. They'll know that they've won one or the other. Uh, and members of both teams, uh, at least one, must attend the 30th Emerging Issues Forum in Raleigh on February 9th through the 10th, 2015. Um, so on January 23rd, we're also going to notify a group of finalists that have been chosen to, to participate in the fan favorite competition. Uh, and we will post the project abstracts and the links to their application videos on our website, uh, at least by the 20, or around the 23rd, hopefully. So from January 26th to 30th, members of the general public will vote for up to two fan favorites. And the winners of the fan favorite competition will be announced at the Emerging Issues Forum, again on February 9th through 10th. And because of the short turnaround, uh, fan favorite team members are not required to be present, but are, are encouraged. Um, all right, so as I mentioned, all the prizes will be announced in some way by the Emerging Issues Forum uh, or at it on February 9th through 10th. Um, we'll also live stream these announcements on emergingissues.org in case you have friends or family that might want to watch but can't be there in person. Uh, and after the awards are announced, winning team members may begin to implement their, proposal, their proposals as soon as the money is dispersed, or even sooner if they want to get a jump. Um, quarterly status reports will be required, and each team's progress will be reported at the 2016 Emerging Issues Forum. All right, so here's a list of the evaluation criteria that IEI staff and our expert panel of judges will consider. So first, is the application persuasive, well-organized, and professional? Does the team identify an innovative approach to the identified challenge? Does the team explain how its solution differs from other attempts to address the challenge? Has the team based its proposed solution on reasonable assumptions and credible data? Does the team have adequate and relevant experience, education, business acumen, time management abilities, and organizational skills? Will the proposed solution have a significant and lasting impact on the challenge it seeks to address? And lastly, is the proposed solution scalable, and can it be replicated in other communities or across large regions of North Carolina? I want to take a moment to talk about uh, public disclosure and intellectual property consideration. I know in, in the past and with other prize competitions, this is something that the teams have been encouraged to consider. And this year, we're really encouraging teams to also consider it uh, for our competition. So before submitting an application, teams are encouraged to think carefully about the issues of public disclosure and intellectual property. Keep in mind that IEI promotes and makes public the prize competition. Uh, winning and other proposals, including the videos, the identities of winners, and certain other parts of the application. So as a result, this competition exposes your ideas, potential or actual intellectual property, and or patentable ideas to public notice. So confidentiality is not guaranteed in any way. If you need to guard against guard confidential ideas or materials, you should not include them with your submissions. And if you intend to file patent protection for any or or part of your, for any part or aspect of your proposal, be aware that entry into this competition may be construed as a public disclosure. And you may wish to consult with an intellectual property attorney before submitting your application. Ownership of any intellectual property associated with winning proposals developed with prize money will be governed by the intellectual policies of the team's educational institution and the terms and conditions of the grant. So if the institution administering the award lacks an intellectual property policy, a winning team will be required to create and submit an agreement that establishes ownership of ideas that emerge from the team's efforts. The Institute for Emerging Issues, the State Employees Credit Union, and its foundation and the North and NC State University take no financial or ownership interest in the projects funded by this competition. 
and inter-team confidentiality is the sole responsibility of team members, and IEI will not arbitrate any such disputes. And lastly today, I want to talk about what's expected of winning teams. So IEI will provide formal notification to all prize winners by a letter sent to the team captain and also to the principal investigator. And this letter will describe the approved budget and reporting requirements. A separate award letter and contract, including reporting requirements, will be sent for signature to the administrative contact. And the first half of prize funding will be distributed to the institution for team use after this form is signed and returned. As noted in the budget commentary and budget section, each winning team must select an IEI approved professional advisor who may not be the PI or administrative contact to serve as a mentor during the, proposed in, during the proposal implementation. And a minimum of 10% of the award is to be allocated for this purpose. And this is intended to compensate the mentor for their time or they are working on a specific product for you, such as a, an audit or a consultation. Um, winners of the Fan Favor and IEI's Emerging Issues Awards will also be required to develop an IEI approved plan for adapting their original proposals to these award levels. And for all winners, any failure to comply with reporting requirements may result in the delay or cancellation of the award disbursement. So please. Uh, don't drop off after you uh, <laughs> submit your application or win, please. Okay, so that was the end of my webinar this morning. Now I'm going to answer the questions that were asked during that time. Uh, so the first question I got was, can the project be an extension of a currently funded project at the university? And the answer is yes, it can. Um, we strongly prefer that the ideas originate within the student group, uh, but um, as long as all team members and the principal investigator uh, meet the eligibility requirements uh, of, of the project, uh, they're definitely eligible to, be, to uh, apply. And we're also really hoping for winners of past prize competitions. So, uh, a lot of universities these days have pitch competitions or social entrepreneurship competitions, and we strongly encourage uh, uh, participants of those competitions or, or winners to apply for this competition. Um, we're really looking for some well-formed and well-thought-out projects, and uh, I think projects that have already been vetted and are already up and running would look very favorable uh, in the judges' eyes this year. The next question I got were, are there limits for student members uh, to be included in the budget? So, meaning that um, can allocations be made to compensate the student team members? Uh, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, just make sure you include that in your budget. Uh, this could be especially relevant for um, if you have seniors who apply to the award and then uh, need to continue to work on it after they graduate. So this could, the part of the prize money could go to help compensating them for their work on the project. And you can also use this award. Um, I mean, we've had teams that want to use it for office spaces in the past uh, or other uh, support um, for the team. And another question I got was, can projects have team members from different institutions? And the answer is also yes, they, they can, as long as every team member uh, meets our eligibility requirements. Now the caveat with this would be, if all team members can access the funds that are distributed from the host institution. So, which they, the team would have to decide which university would, uh, would accept the, the funds and distribute them and, and just make sure that that can be distributed to every member of the group. Another question was, can the projects propose a prototype project for trial in North Carolina, but could be scalable nationally? And the answer I gave, yes. Uh, we specifically say in our application that we are looking for projects that are scalable. 
So it, you might start with the trial in a, a North Carolina community, um, but the project could easily be applied to uh, the broader region, uh, the whole state, or even beyond the state. So that, that is definitely uh, an, an eligible pro type of project. Um, another question was, can the budget include time for the PI and the AC? And the answer again is yes, if necessary. Um, we don't, as I mentioned before, we don't allow any institutional overhead. Uh, so we would have to consider this uh, as it's described in the budget uh, if it's uh, different from that. But, um, but yes, I, I believe that part of the budget could be used to, uh, to compensate the PI. Um, another question I got, does this mean that students must still be students by the spring and fall of 2015? Um, and that's not necessarily the case. They, they need to be students um, at least by the time of application. Uh, and I know we'll have some students that might graduate in the, in the May after they receive the award. Uh, and so they'll, they'll definitely be eligible to continue working on the project. They just need to ensure that their team's institution will allow them to do so and allow them to access the funds. Um, but yes, ideally all team members would still be students, but it's not, not a requirement. And the last question I got was, could this PowerPoint uh, be sent out to participants or even a recording of this webinar can be posted so they can be shared with others at my college? And the answer is definitely yes, and that's um, what, what you're watching right now. Uh, and those were all the questions I got, and that's how I answered them. And I will um, definitely keep these questions in mind. And if any of the answers change, or um, if the terms of the prize change, I'll be sure to notify you all and post the changes to our website. Thank you for your time, and that's all I have for today. And uh, please let me know, again, if you have any questions. My email and phone number are listed there. Um, and thank you.